When St. James was founded in 1810, the first building sat in the country refuge of Hamilton Square, a boat ride up the East River from busy lower Manhattan. As of 1837, St. James already had an American-made organ. The parish grew as the Upper East Side grew, and when a second, larger building on 72nd Street was built in 1869, a new organ was installed there as well. The current building, located on the corner of 71st Street and Madison Avenue, was built in 1885 and redesigned by Ralph Adams Cram in 1924. In this building, there had always been a large organ. First a Roosevelt, which was expanded by Robert Hope Jones in 1907, then an Austin organ in 1924. A large instrument was built by M.P. Moeller in 1956 and then reconstructed in 1985, in which the antiphonal organ was expanded and redesigned. In 2001, we had a major problem which seriously affected worship and music making. During the renovation of the building, the M.P. Moeller organ was damaged beyond repair. It took a while for it to sink in. I don't think I realized how easily a, a, an instrument of that size can be destroyed. When it came to making the big decision, the rector summed it up best by saying, get the best organ possible. After considering various organ builders from around the world, we hired Schoenstein and Company of San Francisco and Benicia, California to create a new organ for St. James Church. We determined that in order to meet our needs, Schoenstein would have to build two organs that could be played separately or as one large instrument, the St. James Bicentennial Organ. I've always been an admirer of Jack's symphonic tonal philosophy and the fact that he has a very clear-cut approach to identifying needs and resolving any challenges. Well, the first consideration in building a church organ is, what is the church's musical philosophy? What uh, is their musical objective? And that was number one. Of course, knowing Davis for a long time, that made the process of communication very easy because he was able to describe succinctly exactly what the church is doing and what he thinks they will be doing musically. At St. James, as in most Anglican and Episcopal churches, the organ plays a key role in worship, supporting both choir and congregational singing. That's the first objective. Make an organ that has in it the capabilities to satisfy the musical needs of the parish. Second thing to think about is the acoustics of the building. And uh, St. James is a large building, but not terribly resonant. It's, uh, it has a nice resonance, but not a what people often call a cathedral-like resonance. So that requires a particular uh, kind of organ tone that will lend warmth and, and uh, uh, beauty without the resonance that uh, many organs have. So the organ itself, in other words, has to make up the difference to give that wonderful cathedral-like sound. The third the point is, where is the organ located? Is the organ freestanding in the room? Is it in chambers? In your case, it's both places. We have in the gallery a freestanding organ, which in effect is like a piece of furniture standing in the room with its uh, to enclose the pipes. We also have two very nice chambers on either side of the choir um, at the east end. The gallery organ, which is a two manual instrument with 18 ranks, would be installed first so we could have a proper instrument to play while the larger instrument that goes on the north and south organ chambers in the chancel was being finished in time for our bicentennial in 2010. An organ is more than just pipes, keys, and a lot of wind to drive the sound through the room. It takes craftsmanship, planning, and old-fashioned labor to bring this idea to life. The process takes two or three years. Uh, once we get started on it, the first thing is the engineering, the design of the instrument. And uh, we, this uh, starts with taking measurements here at the church to make sure we uh, have all the correct dimensions to work with. And then the organ is designed to fit that space. And in this case, we worked with the case designer and builder, New Holland, to uh, work out those details so it would match up with our instrument. Uh, the next item is to, um, the parts are 
built in our mill. Uh, the chest work, the console, things like that all sort of go through in various stages. And uh, once all that is assembled, the chests are uh, taken over to what we call the assembly shop, for instance, and uh, all the internal components are installed and the chest is tested out uh, for proper functioning. The rest of the organ parts continue on to what we call the erecting room, where it's uh, actually set up just like it will be in the church. The organ is uh, then completed as far as winding. All the components are put in. We even put the pipes on the chest and uh, then hook the console up to it and, um, and play the instrument, making sure everything is okay, there's no collisions between the pipes. And then it is um, taken back down and prepared for shipping to the job. A successful organ for St. James Church has to be able to accompany congregational song, choral singing, and play organ literature. To be able to do that, the organ has to be able to play everything from the softest whisper to the loudest trumpet call. Well, my background as a musician is as an orchestral player. So I uh, have a definitely orchestral view toward music. And I think of the organ as a big, orchestra played by one performer. Uh, and it really is. It's a collection of instruments, and that sort of defines an orchestra. And I think that uh, the secret of an ensemble is flexibility and uh, the ability to uh, make music uh, that is truly expressive, fully expressive, of every idea a composer may have, or of every idea an organist may have while improvising. My whole objective is to try to make the organ more musically like a symphony orchestra. Many people misinterpret that. I don't mean to imitate a symphony orchestra or to play the music of a symphony orchestra by transcription. What I mean is making the organ as flexible and as interesting, as colorful, and dramatic and exciting and beautiful as a great symphony orchestra. I can't tell you what it meant to me to see the parishioners show up for the arrival of the gallery organ. I knew I'd been waiting for this day for years. I had no idea that it meant as much to parishioners as it meant to me. Everyone came, rolled up their sleeves, dug in, and we got the job done. First, it was a hot and very humid uh, evening that the uh, organ uh, showed up um, to be uh, unloaded at the church, and so we were grateful for any help, of course. Uh, but uh, we never know what to expect. That was one of the most fun and truly community building experiences we had, to have the people that we did there just joining together and obviously joyously unloading this truck on one of the worst hot, humid nights of the summer. But there was such a sense of community and I think everybody sort of felt this is, this is our organ. Uh, we all were putting our own blood, sweat and tears into this organ. And I've actually told so many people who didn't come that next June, when the rest of the organ gets here, they absolutely have to come and help unload it because it was just such a fabulous evening. And I think all of us are now just waiting to hear it. I really want St. James to have a wonderful, wonderful organ uh, that uh, could rival the very best in the city. Because unfortunately over the years, St. James has had some uh, sad experiences with organs. And uh, uh, I, I'm very pleased that they are not uh, disappointed with pipe organs and are willing to continue the tradition of having a fine pipe organ. So my objective is very simple. I want them to have the best organ in New York City. Uh, being in the gallery, I think it uh, sometimes takes people by surprise. They walk into the church and they uh, look around and appreciate all the beauty that this, this particular uh, building has, uh, the ceiling and the raritos up front and all that. But then if they turn around, uh, we sort of see them uh, jump or sort of surprised to see what they uh, find when they look to the back. So uh, I, uh, I hope that um, people both find it uh, very uh, 
um, much to their liking uh, um, visually as well as musically. We're just very fortunate to be a parish that has the wherewithal to make that happen. Um, and enough people who really love music at this church to make that happen. So I think it's wonderful. Uh, it's like Phoenix rising out of the ashes. Uh, we lost the old organ, uh, but we're far better off with our new one. So it's very exciting. The organ has long been called the king of instruments. If I had one wish for the parish, it would be that they feel the sense of excitement and wonder I feel every time I sit down to play.